What's going on, Sanctuary? I'm Pool Noodle X, and today I'm bringing you a little guide to all the level 85 areas, old and new, for Diablo 2 Resurrected. In this video, I'm gonna go over where the zone is, how long it takes on average to get there three times, both on foot and tellying, what immunities are there waiting to punch you in the face, and my personal opinion, if I have one, on whether or not the zone is worth it. There will be timestamps right below my face here for you to jump around with, so without too much more of a delay, let's get to the action. We'll start with Act 1 and work our way up. The mausoleum is in the burial grounds next to Blood Raven. Via the Cold Plains waypoint, it takes about 44 seconds to get there on foot and 15 seconds to get there with teleport. The only immunities that can be in this place are lightning, so almost anyone can farm here just fine. I personally hate this place, but I have heard many people seeing some pretty big success here. Next is the pits. The pits are very popular already and it resides in the Tamo Highlands just outside the Outer Cloister waypoint. It took me about 27 seconds to get there on foot and 10 seconds to get there with teleport. The pits can have fire, light, and cold immunes, which is why some really popular classes you see farming this are the Zerker Barbarian and the Paladin. I haven't ever farmed here myself, but I do know that this is many other players and creators' favorite spot to farm and finish their grails. The Underground Passage Level 2 I don't think needs much explaining since you've all found this stupid place on the way to Dark Wood, but in case you're curious, it took 1 minute and 6 seconds to get here on foot and 24 seconds to get here with teleport. The immunities in this zone are fire, cold, lightning, and poison. With how long it takes to get here and the somewhat lack of density, I would say this zone is probably not worth making the trek unless you're really bored and need a change of scenery. Moving on to Act 2, we have the Stony Tombs just outside in the Rocky Waste. It generally only takes about 1 minute and 15 seconds to get here on foot and 50 seconds teleporting, but that's with about 15 seconds of running through town and searching a pretty wide area for this one. The immunities here can include lightning, poison, and a super unique that's cold. Super uniques are awesome because they drop two items instead of one and they should always be there every every time you run it. I think this place was a great addition to the level 85 areas because the map is a decent size and it has adequate density through and through. The Maggot Layer level 3 is next on this list, although this is another one that doesn't require much explanation. In all honesty, I wouldn't farm here if my life fucking depended on it, but it's a level 85 zone, so it has to be on the list. It took between 4 to 5 minutes to get here on foot and about 1 minute and 32 seconds with teleport. The immunities that can be here are physical, lightning, poison, and the big super unique Maggot boss is always cold. I would say fire characters thrive more in here due to the lack of fire immunes, but regardless of what you choose to bring in here, I would recommend having a high amount of light res and a spare keyboard in case you break your current one. Ancient Tunnels is next, and this one resides in the Lost City, and is generally in a cluster of buildings like this. On average, it took me 42 seconds to get here on foot, and 25 seconds with teleport. The immunities for this one can be magic, fire, lightning, and poison. Traditionally speaking, this place has always been one of the best spots to farm as a cold sork or a cold boson, if such a thing is your style of play, of course. I don't really have anything negative to say about this zone, it's always a good idea to run it. For Act 3, the Arachnid Lair is next on the list and probably the easiest place to get to as you simply waypoint to the Spider Forest and walk about 7 steps. The average time to get here both on foot and tellying is roughly equivalent to how long I last in the bedroom. The immunities that can spawn here are fire, lightning, and poison. I would say Arachnid Lair is a pretty quick zone and an easy super chest to snag, so it's not a bad idea to add to your running list if your immunities fit the requirements. The Swampy Pits is another one like the Arachnid Lair where you can get there in just a few seconds from its respective Flare Jungle Waypoint regardless of who you are. I will say beforehand that this is one of the most dangerous fucking places in D2 in my opinion as you can spawn souls and stygians on the same map. The immunities here can be fire, lightning, and poison. With how dangerous this place is, I don't assume it'll be very high on nearly anyone's farm list, but if you are one of those who may farm this, please let us know what your thoughts are down below. Next up is the sewers in Act 3, not to be confused with the sewers in Act 2. There are a few entrances to this one that reside both in Bazaar and Upper Kurost. It takes about 26 seconds to get here on foot and 11 seconds with teleport. The immunities in here can include magic, lightning, poison, and cold, as well as a super unique that's also cold. Sewers 1 is dope because it's pretty big and thus there's a lot of farming that can be done here, but the real treasure literally lies in Sewers 2. There are, I believe, three super chests down here in addition to the quest chest. Now there is a question to whether or not super chest hunting here is better than lower Kurost, but the answer really is only yes if you like farming Sewers 1. The next six will be summarized in one section, and these are the six temples located in the Bazaar, Upper Kurost, and the Causeway. The names are all rather confusing and sound the same, so much so that I sought the help of the legendary BT Neanderthal for this section, but the Ruined Temple and the Disused Fane are both in the Bazaar, the Forgotten Temple and Forgotten Reliquary are both in Upper Kurost, and the Disused Reliquary and the Ruined Fane are in the causeway between Trav and Upper. They all take about 35 seconds to get there on foot and about 12 seconds with Tele on average. For immunities in the Kurost Bazaar, the Ruined Temple can have Fire, Cold, and Magic, as well as a Cold Immune Super, and the Disused Fane, on the other hand, can have every immunity out there, so that sounds like a nightmare. In Upper Kurost, 
for us, the Forgotten Temple can have fire, cold, and lightning, while the Forgotten Reliquary can have fire, cold, and magic. In the causeway, the Disused Reliquary and the Ruined Fane can both have fire, cold, and lightning. I don't know how meta these zones are really going to be, so I'm going to leave that one up to you, but I'm excited that we just have more level 85 zones to farm. Now for Act 4, this one really doesn't require much explaining, so I'll keep this pretty short. The River of Flame and the Chaos Sanctuary are both level 85, and you cross through one to get to the other. The immunities for both are fire, light, and cold, and River actually has a poison immune that can spawn. Chaos Sanctuary is incredibly popular because it's so dense and you get to kill Diablo at the end of it. It does normally take some decent gear to farm here, but the payout is almost always worth it. For Act 5, the first on the list is the Abaddon Red Portal located in the Frigid Highlands. And yes, that's how you say it, I googled it twice. It took 53 seconds to get here on foot and 18 seconds with Telly. The immunities this place can have are physical, fire, lightning, cold, and poison. There are no super uniques here, but there's definitely a healthy amount of density as well as a golden chest at the end. With the high amount of immunities this place can have, it seems like it would be best to avoid it unless of course you're playing a hammered in, which I know isn't much of a surprise to anybody. Next here is the very similar pit of Acheron Red Portal located in Ariat Plateau. Now that one I can never remember if it's Ariat or Ariat. Like the others, it took about 56 seconds to get here on foot and 28 seconds with teleport. The immunities that can be here are physical, fire, cold, poison, and magic. Like the other Red Portal, there is no super unique here, but there's a healthy amount of density as well as a golden chest to retrieve. Unfortunately, again, the high amount of immune possibilities in here are what hold me back from recommending the zone, though some may enjoy it. The third Red Portal is the Infernal Pits located in the Frozen Tundra. It took me about 1 minute and 25 seconds to get here on foot and 21 seconds with teleport. The immunities that can spawn here are fire, lightning, cold, and poison. Similarly to the other Red Portals, there are no super uniques in here, but there's a healthy amount of density as well as a juicy gold chest to plunder at the very end. But alas, like the others, the high amount of immunes in here make it hard to recommend for anybody to farm this efficiently. Drifter Cavern is next on the list, and this one is located in the Glacial Trail. It took me about 41 seconds to get here on foot and 23 seconds with teleport. The immunities that can spawn here are fire, lightning, cold, poison, and physical. This place is an actual nightmare of moon lords and succubi, but it's pretty dense and has, of course, a beautiful golden chest at the end. The high amount of immunes, and let's be honest, the fact that there are moon lords here has me not wanting to recommend this torment to anybody, but yet again, you can farm this if you so please. The Icy Cellar is one of the last zones on this list, and it's located in the Ancient's Way. It takes about 1 minute and 3 seconds to get here on foot and 14 seconds with Telly. The immunities that can spawn here are physical, lightning, cold, and poison, and there is a super unique that's always cold immune. The density in this zone is nice, and it does have a super unique as well as a golden chest, but it also comes with two out of three of my least favorite things, which are magic vipers and Stygian dolls. The only thing missing from that list is souls, and then it would literally be the worst place in Diablo 2 in my opinion. However, farming this zone obviously has a high payout with that super and the golden chest. Worldstone Keep levels 1, 2, and 3 are an absolute death wish to just about anybody, but if you have a dual element build, you can farm pretty much all of it if you're that much of a masochist. It's definitely one of the healthiest places for density and elite packs, so if you're yearning for some self-inflicted pain, this is your spot. I actually recall getting my first high rune ever, which was a Sir here in Worldstone Keep. And then of course at the end there's at least Bale and his minion waves, so there's that. Do me a favor and subscribe if you haven't already and like this video so more people can see it because I know there's a huge portion of the community who can benefit from one part of this or another. I stream all of my leveling, farming, and uber operations live on Twitch quite a few times a week, so if you're looking for some live interaction and entertainment, make sure you follow from the link in the description down below. There will be a few other helpful links like one to the Noodle Gang Discord where a lot of us have been hanging out lately, so don't be a stranger and come on in. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Happy grinding travelers, and I'll see you next week.